Oh, how you doing? Are you serious? The Middle East is getting absolutely at the pinnacle of an explosive moment. We are living in times like we have never seen in biblical prophecy and in history. Quickly, I want to get you up to speed. What? Are you serious? Yes. Get a Bible. Open it to Matthew 24. Get a cup of coffee. Get ready. Quickly, Gary, Reverend Gary Pitzer out of uh, Henderson, Kentucky. Keeps me up to speed on a lot of stuff. Paul, United Kingdom expects Israeli attack on Iran next month with U.S. logistical support. And that's an article coming out of www.debka.com. That's debka.com. Read the article. I'll quickly go. There's more information. i got to move quick today because there's so much to cover on this subject, okay? Uh, quickly, Stephen of Oklahoma keeps me up to speed on a lot of stuff going on. And, uh, okay, there is seven, seven militants in Pakistan have died. A U.S., it's suspected that a United States drone fired missiles at a house in northwestern Pakistan near the Afghan border early today on this November the uh, 15th, 2011, in the northwestern Pakistani area and along the Afghan border, killing at least seven alleged militant Muslims there, according to Pakistani intelligent officials. The strike occurred in the main town there of... Um, it's a tribal area, and it hit them along the border. This is a key hub in that area right there for the Taliban and for Al-Qaeda. Okay, so this happened today, this morning. Um, wow, so keep an eye on that. It's not the first time that our drones have killed radical Islamic jihadist Muslim militants, those ministers of Mecca, but it is significant during the timing we're talking about when you look at biblical prophecy, study what's going on in Psalms 83 with the intifada that's been declared against Israel. Now, while that was happening, King of Jordan, King Abdullah II, told the BBC that the Syrian president Bashar Assad should step down. So you've got the Jordan king, the king of Jordan, who fired his whole government, by the way. I'll tell you what he's doing. He's a smart man. He sees what's going on in the Arab Spring. He understands biblical prophecy. I'm sure he does. And if he's read in Daniel chapter 11, he knows that many countries, the Bible says, are going to be overthrown. Don't forget Matthew 24. Keep your, keep your Bible marker there. But I'm quickly, I've got Zechariah 14 here, but I'm going to quickly go over here and look at Daniel chapter 11 where the Bible says, he shall enter also into the glorious land and many countries shall be overthrown, okay? But these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape. That happened, Jose Mabarak's gone. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver. NATO has taken over all the gold and silver. Jose Mabarak, who is the richest man in the world, he was worth 70 billion Dollars and also all the gold that Muammar Gaddafi had there in Libya. It was the largest stockpile of gold in the world. Both the treasuries, the silver and the gold, and over all the precious things of Egypt and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. He's right at their door with what? Famine, drought, uh, disease, swarms of locusts. I mean... But tidings out of the east, that's China, and out of the north, that's Russia, will trouble him. Now listen. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. There's a great war right there. That's your Psalms 83 war. It's getting ready to happen. Now look at this. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas, the Mediterranean and the Red Sea. In the glorious holy mountain, 
yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. It's talking about the Antichrist. And the Antichrist spirit, the precursor to the rise of the Antichrist, is happening right now. Many countries are being overthrown. Ivory Coast got rid of Cabo. He had to go. Tunisia got rid of uh, Ben Ali after 23 years. Egypt got rid of Jose Mubarak after 32 years. Libya got rid of Muammar Gaddafi after 42 years. Now King Jordan fired his whole government because he had protesting in going on in Jordan saying they want to get rid of King Abdullah II of Jordan. So he fired his whole government, set up a whole new government, and then turned and said, guys, Syria's president Assad must go. So he's deflecting. And he's trying to side with the NATO group. Why? Because Saudi Arabia, who's in the Arab League, has already said Assad must go. And that's because of the Shiite and the Sunni um, conflict between those two different Muslim groups. So, what, what's America done? America has sent, obviously, go all the way back to President George Bush. Saddam Hussein was removed from Iraq. America also went into Afghanistan, getting rid of that corrupt government of a bunch of Taliban, okay? And while that's going on, Ivory Coast changed leadership, Tunisia overthrew their president, Egypt overthrew their president, uh, Libya, Gaddafi was finally removed from power forcibly by the help of the people and NATO, which included America, England, and France, and, Ch and Canada, and Australia, and Poland, and Romania, and then NATO and Turkey. Now, and then while that's going on, folks, of course, Iran has been constantly threatening Israel to blow them off the face of the map, which is what it says in Psalms 83. That is, the, that is what King David said they would say. It says, Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace. Be not still, O God. For lo, thy enemies shall make turmoil, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They've taken crafty counsel against thy people, consulted against thy hidden ones. They've said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. That's a biblical prophecy. Now, while all this is going on, Turkey today is saying that they're taking a strong, resolute stance against Assad of Syria. So America's calling for Assad to go. Obama has said Assad must go. England says he must go. France, Nicolas Sarkozy said he must go. Israel said he must go, okay? NATO is getting in position, I think, to create a no-fly zone and to remove President Assad from power in Syria. Even Turkey now is saying he must go. Meanwhile, Ahmadullahjad of Iran still wants to blow up Jerusalem and is creating nuclear weapons. And America doesn't trust what the United Nations are doing. That's released today. U.S. are concerned about the United Nations nuclear uh, inspection work with Syria. What nuclear uh, inspection work? There's been none. Okay, so they're concerned about Syria. They're concerned about Iran. That's why it looks like Iran is, uh, looks like an attack is coming upon Iran. It's either coming from America, England, France, Germany, or Israel. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. But here's the thing. Russia and China says, if anybody goes after Iran, we're there. That's why President Obama is scheduled to consult, it says, U.S. President Obama to consult with China and Russia in on Iran. I'm going to flip to that article real quick. I got about a minute to go. Wow, you just can't cover everything going on in 10 minutes in the Middle East. I mean, how can you? China and Russia share the United States objective of ensuring that Iran does not make weapons via the nuclear program. That's a bull-faced lie, guys. Russia built the nuclear plant. Iran paid Russia $1 billion to build the plant where the enriched uranium is being made. They sold Iran 163 truckloads of enriched uranium. I'm, look, oh, what, what, I'll tell you what's going to come out of this meeting. Obama's going to flat tell them they better back off because Iran is in the crosshairs of Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel, England, France, America, Germany, and probably Turkey. We'll be back. Stay with me today.